Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This is going to be a demonstration of using a new plugin called PropLine. So in this scene here we have a, a small farm setting and we want to add some props around it to make it more realistic. And in this scene we want to put some fence lines all the way around this walkway here. You have several ways you can do this and one way would be to use the spacing tool inside of 3ds Max but it has some limitations. So we're going to use PropLine to do it to make it a lot more simple. I'm going to start with, I already have some fence models over here. I have six different models, three posts and three sets of planks here. What I'm going to do is add a PropLine object to the scene. And now I'm going to go to the settings for this and I'm going to pick the objects. I need to pick them in the order that I want them if I want these to be ordered and there we can reorder them later but I'm gonna do it right now and as you can see that each one that I pick gets added to this list here and it's in the order that I pick them and I can move them up and down later if I want to now that I have them here I can then distribute those along splines with the spline setting here there are different settings in prop line you can go to the docs to find them all but for the case here, I want to use the size, in which case the size of each object is going to uh, determine the spacing of them along the spline. I'm going to create a spline, and I want to snap to the face here to make this easier to understand what's going on here. So let's just start drawing our prop line object. And as you can see, we have this fence that's following the shape here. And when we export this into game, each of these is going to export as its own prop entity. Instead of one giant fence, it'll be several props. And we can use Bezier splines as I just pulled along there. And we're just going to stop there for now. Now we have a place over here that's a little messed up. It's because the shape of the spline. We can go in here and edit this as needed. And this was determined by the um, the way I dragged the, the line on the surface. Sometimes you have to pay attention to that kind of thing. Alright, so now that we have this up here, we can go in and tweak it later. I just want to show you the essential basics of this at the moment. I am actually going to change this a little bit here. It will make what I'm going to do a little bit later a little bit easier. So now that we have this fence here, we can do all kinds of things to it, including changing the we can vary the the offset and size of these so like we'll go back to the settings for here and we can go to the transformations of this and we can do some things like randomizing offsets and rotations of these so for example if I wanted these to randomly rotate just a little bit in the z-axis and add a little bit of that in negative and positive. You don't want to go too far in this specific scenario. The fences that need to kind of line up. But with ones that you want to turn a lot, we can make them go a lot more. We can randomly offset the Z, so this would be up and down. So I'm going to do minus 3 and plus 3. So they'll be up and down. That's a little bit drastic for what I want here. They're uh, now not lined up exactly and then we might want to have them just a little bit randomly rotate on the x-axis which is the the vector along the spline so we'll rotate these minus two to positive two so now they have a little bit of a rotation they're not all standing at the same angle and there are more options that you can uh, use this to control but now we're going to show you how to that we can use prop lines, separate prop lines, and reuse the same spline to get an effect. So on this case, we want to add some grass along 
uh, the base of this. So I've already created um, a prop line earlier that has some grass proxies attached to it. And I'm going to say that this guy's active now. I had deactivate him. And I'm just going to reuse the same spline I already have here. So I'm going to hit pick spline and pick that. And now you can see that we have grass. We have grass going along this fence line. In this case, the prop distribution is random. It's not ordered like the fence was. So in this case, it's randomly choosing which of the three grasses to place along here. And then we have some a little bit of random uh, rotations on them and a little bit of offsets to make it how we want it. So in this case, the offset is forcing all of the grass to be on this side of the fence. If we wanted to change that, I could main, make this go to the other side of the fence, in which case now all the grass is right behind the fence. And now I have another prop line that uses a different set of uh, plants, and I'm going to tell it to also use the same uh, spline that we have here. I'm going to activate it. And in this case, we have just a bunch of plants that are going along the outside of the fence here. So this is a good way to use splines to control the distribution of your props in your scene. Right now, it's all parametric, so there are only actually three objects here. Each of these sets of props is one object. So the fence is one object, this set of plants is one object, and the grass is one object. I can collapse those, I can instantiate those, the button down here, which will actually put them out as individual objects, which you can further tweak to your needs then. There are other features that we haven't gone over, and I'll cover those in another video. But hopefully you understand now the, the value of using a system like PropLine. Um, if I just edit that one spline that controls all these, all of the prop systems will update to follow it. And it's a good way to work with other systems like Corvex because we can use the same splines to build world geometry and then populate them with props with the same contour systems. I'll go over that in another video. So you can get PropLine at Wallworm.com and updated versions of all the Wallworm plugins at Wallworm.com. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net. Thank you and have a good day.